In the book of Exodus, I'll be reading out of the book of Exodus, the 19th chapter, first six scriptures. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day they came into the wilderness, wilderness of Sinai, for they were departed from Rephidim and were come to the desert of Sinai. And had pitched in the wilderness, and there Israel camped before the mount. And Moses went up unto God. And the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians. And how I bared you on wing on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. You shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Um, Philippians, let me have Philippians. Philippians, the fourth chapter, two verses of scripture again. For those of you who read your Bible or been in church a long time, you probably heard this quite often. Two verses of Scripture, Philippians 4, verses 12 through 13. I know both how to be a base and I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Verse 13, I can do all things through Christ which strengthen me. I want to preach on the thought this morning, the journey to the promise. The journey to the promise. Can you look at your neighbor this morning? Say, neighbor, I'm on my journey because of the promise. Um, in the book of Exodus, again, this is a very familiar passage of scripture. Um, God said to the children, it told Moses to tell the children of Israel, you seen what I have done. I'm going to say it in our everyday language. You know what I can do. God told the man of God, he told Moses to tell the people, you got, you all know what I can do. I brought you out on eagle's wings. You know how good I have been to you. You know what I brought you from. You know what I can do. You've seen what I can do. You've seen how I can, amen, amen, I can snatch you out of the hands of the enemy. I loose the shackles from every taskmaster that was over you. You've seen what I can do. All I need you to do is keep my covenant. You already know what I can do. I don't know about you, but I know what he can do. I've seen what he's done to my enemies. I've seen what God has already done. <laughs> 
I know what he's done in my life. He loosed every shackle that held me bound. He loosed me, amen. He delivered me from the enemy of myself. He delivered me, Lord God. He delivered me, amen, from addictions. He delivered me from a mind of addictions. Addictions of drugs, addiction of alcohol, addiction of suicide, all type of addiction. He delivered me. He set us free. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, you know what he can do. You know he brought you up out of a horrible pit. You know mama couldn't do that. If she could, she would have. You knew daddy couldn't do it. If he could, he would. Could nobody do this but God. God brought you out on eagles. He said, I brought them out on eagles' wings. They seen what I can do. Pharaoh, the most powerful man in the world, God made him look like nothing. God made him look like absolutely nothing in comparison to him. There's no God like our God. He is the king of all kings. There's no king like our king. He is the king of glory. He's the Lord Almighty. He let Pharaoh know, I'm the God that has all might. There's nobody got more power than me. There's nobody that has more strength than me. There's nobody has the power that I have. I'm God all. I got it all. I got it all. I don't have some power. I don't have a little power. I got all power. That's got it all. I got it all. So the man of God had to go up in the mountain. He said, Moses, tell them. They seen what I can do, Moses. They already know. Ain't no doubt about it. Ain't no guessing. God brought some of us off 13th Street. Thank you, Jesus. He brought some of us out the crack house. Thank you, Jesus. He brought some of us out of line, just lying all the time. Thank you, Jesus. Some of us was thieves. Thank you, Jesus. He brought all of us from somewhere. Some of us was suicide. Our mind was so flipped out. We didn't know whether or not we want to live or die. But he brought us out on ego's wing. He said, tell them, y'all know what I can do. Know what I can do now. And so God, (laughs) amen, God brought them out of Egypt from the most powerful man in the world. He loosed the shackles that had them bound. They had, they can't help it. And they couldn't help themselves. It took nobody but God. This was a job for God. They didn't have the strength, but God did. They didn't have the ability, but God had it. They didn't have the wisdom, but God had it. God brought them out. He he brought them out. And once he brought them out. God just didn't bring them out just to be bringing them out. He didn't bring them out so that they can just wander around. See, we serve a methodical God. You ever heard the term, there's a method to this madness? See, God has a method of what he's doing. God just don't do anything. If the truth be told, he do all. And so God had, a, God had a purpose for bringing them out. He had a purpose. He just wasn't bringing them out, 
but he had a, a purpose. And he said in the sixth verse, he said, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. And he said, Moses, tell them that. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, this has always been the will of God. Now look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor, this just one for preachers. He said, they all, all, everybody. God did not have a purpose just for Moses. Actually, the truth be told, they already had priests. Aaron was the priest and his sons. But in the progressive will of God, all of God's people, well, let me say it like this, in the kingdom of God, we're all priests. It is all our responsibility to serve the will of God. God brought them out so that they would serve his will. Not some of them, but all of them. Not just a few people, but everybody had to play a part. Everybody had a responsibility that has always been the will of God if you look in the book of Peter he says the same thing that you are royal priesthood kingdom royal pre kingdom royal priesthood amen if you're going to be a part of the kingdom if you're going to have a kingdom mindset you got to make up your mind and say God whatever it takes I'll do your will I'll serve you whatever it takes he said, you're going to be a peculiar people. I'm going to set you aside for my use. Because I want you to be the manifestation of me in the earth. Look at your neighbor say, neighbor. God does not want to live in you. He, want to, he wants to work through you. He wants to live through you. God so desperately wants to get his life to live through you. See, we didn't die for him. He died for us. And so we're not trying to live for him. He's trying to live for us. That's how God brought them in the wilderness and in the book of Deuteronomy, he said, I brought you in out here. He said, I took you these 40 years out here in the wilderness. He said, I brought you out here to humble you. To test you. And to see what's in your heart. And so God brought them to the place where, where they could develop into the priests that God had purpose for them to be. God brought them into the place where he can teach them how to serve him. And so he said, I brought you out here to humble you. And to teach you. And to see what's in your heart. See, the wilderness is not necessarily a test of endurance. But the wilderness is a test of response. God, want, God desire to know. Whether how you're going to respond to him, regardless, amen, of what the environment looked like. 
God is interested in how you're going to respond to him. And so he brought them out here, out there, amen, to reveal what was in their heart. He had to show them what was in their heart, but it was not for destruction. It was cons for construction. What they really, the response should have been, God, whatever it is, not my will, but thy will be done. But but their response was as if God brought them out, amen, as if, amen, God brought him out, out there, amen, as if God and Moses had some type of conspiracy to kill them. If God wanted to kill them, why would he take them in the wilderness to kill them? He could have killed them in Egypt. And so they acted as if God had conspired along with Moses as if this was a murder for hire. And they started grumbling and they started complaining. And they started talking about where they come from. We had it better in Egypt. The devil is a lie. See, but the, the proper response, the reason why I'm saying this is because everybody that has gone to, amen, experience the promise of God at the level that God wants, desire for you to experience. Everybody, amen, got to take the same trail to the wilderness. Sooner or later, amen, you're going to have to, amen, go through the way of the wilderness. Some of us is right in the middle of a wilderness. It's not your wife. It's not your husband. It's not your children. It's not your job. It's not your finances. It is God. He's taking you through the wilderness. He's trying to reveal everything that is in your heart. He's trying to reveal what's in our heart. And see, the heart really will tell the story. Because what the heart really ought to do is to let all of us know every day, God, I need you. Every day, I need you. Something is coming through my heart. I know I need you. I got stuff coming through my heart all day long. God, this just lets me know that I need you. I know what people said, but I need you. I know what my family said, but my heart tells me every day, God, I need I come to humble you. God, I need you. I need you in the morning. I need you in the evening. I need you on the job. I need you to be a daddy. I need you to be a husband. I need you to be a wife. I need you. I need you. I need you. God was trying to reveal what was in their heart. God, I see what's in my heart. Now I need you, Lord, to make this heart pliable. Make this heart pliable. Pliable enough, God, that when, I, when you want me to turn, I'm not afraid to turn. I need my heart so pliable. God, when you move, I'll move with you. God, I need my heart so pliable. When you say go, Lord, I say when go. I'm ready to go. I'm gonna go. I do what you want me to do. When you want me to do it. How you want me to do it. 
He said, I brought you out here to see or to reveal what's in your heart. Before you ever experience, amen, the promise of God, the promised land, the kingdom of God. Paul said, amen, in the book of Acts, he encouraged the saints. The Bible said we must, amen, enter the kingdom with much tribulation. I just want to tell my brothers, I just want to tell my sisters, I just come to talk to the family today. I just want to come to let you know today, all of us going to go through the wilderness. Don't count it strange. Don't back up. Don't turn around. Don't quit. Don't throw in the towel. We all got to go through the wilderness. God is trying to, amen, do something in all of our life. He's trying to transform your mind. He's trying to transform your spirit. Actually, he's trying to get it create in your spirit the appetite for him like you never had before God I'm hungry for you it don't feel right but I'm still hungry it don't look right but I'm still hungry I'm tribulating but I'm still hungry I'm going through something but I'm still hungry they talking about me but I'm still hungry he that put his hands to the plow and look back it's not fit for the kingdom God you've been too good to me for me to look back now you brought me too far for me to look back now you done too much in my life for me to look back God I'm going all the way God I'm going all the way I'm going all the way. I refuse to look back. I refuse to look back. And so all of us, and I'm getting ready to quit, all of us, amen, must have these wilderness experiences. I know sometimes we think the devil is doing things in our life, but sometimes it is God. It is God that's trying, amen, to break us. Amen. God is trying to break some of us. What is he trying to break? He's trying to break your will and let your will become his will. He's trying to break you that he can use you like you've never been used before. You are the priest. We are kingdom of priests. God want to use you. God want want you to serve God want to do something in your life but before he can ever do it he got to get some stuff out of you because if he knows if he don't get it out of you you will start looking back but he's bringing us through so we don't disqualify ourselves he's bringing us through because this man he want this man that was in Christ Jesus to also be in you he's trying to get in your spirit he's trying to get out of that give up spirit that old quitting spirit every time something happened you ready to throw in the tower but the devil is a liar I'm a king's kid the devil is a liar I am a priest I am a servant I belong to God I'm an overcomer I'm a conqueror we are more than enough hallelujah I refuse to give up I refuse to quit I refuse to turn back on God he's been too good to me he loosed the shackles that mama could take off he brought me out of a horrible pit I refuse I refuse to look back I'm on this journey I'm going to the promise hell or high water I'm going to get my promise he promised me I gotta have it I gotta have it I gotta get it I gotta have it I gotta get it I gotta I gotta
see God. I'm getting ready to quit. I know preachers say that. See, God was sending them through this because God had to reprogram their mindset because what God was taking them was to the promised land. And the Bible said, when they got there, before they got there, God told them that there is houses you did not even build. He said, there's wells that you didn't even dig. You didn't even labor for it. That's what God is trying to get. It's symbolic for the kingdom of God. God really is trying to get us into the third dimension of grace. Where it is all God. I wish I had somebody in here. He's trying to teach us how to rest in him. But if he can get us to get rid of our own will. And embrace his will. He's really trying to get us. Amen. To the dimension. Where he'll do all things. Where all things are already done. He really want to do in you. Amen. What God really want to do in you. He want to do all things. He wants you to get to the place. That when they say give him the glory, you will give him the glory without hesitating. Why? Because you will say it was all God. It wasn't even me. You know what I was doing? I was resting in God. The reason, Lord, the reason you see what you see, it's not me. It is all God. I'm just resting. I'm just resting in God. That's what he wanted from me. He wanted me to rest. That's why he gave me the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. He's trying to teach me to get on my comforter. He's trying to teach us how to get on the comforter and get us some rest that we can cease from all of our labor. That we can cease from all of our labor. God ain't never wanted you tired. God ain't never wanted you wore out. He wanted all of us to rest. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, I got to go. I got to go. Got to go. Oh, I'm too long. Pastor, I don't, Lord, have mercy. Somebody give God a hand clap of praise. Come on, give him another hand clap of praise. The journey to the promise, the journey to the promise is not what you've done. It is what God has done. Somebody give him some glory in this house.